Look at that goodness. Tanner, what do you got there? Is that like orange styrofoam? No, no, it's um, it's freeze-dried Skittles. Like, if you ever have freeze-dried candy, the flavor is on a completely different level. Your mouth is gonna be pouring like a waterfall. If you suck on them and you let your spit like get inside it and it just breaks apart, you just have the outer shell left. Chewing that combined with like the mushiness of the inside, it's so... What's up everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. My name's Tanner, I'm a creator for the fitness industry and today I'm gonna go a little bit deeper than just how to create a reel or how I edit short form videos. I'm actually going to explain to you my entire process from brainstorming to recording to editing. And I'm really excited to share this with you because I think you're gonna gain some valuable insight. But before I do that, I hope that you like this video and subscribe to my channel just to see more videos like this in the future. If you do that, that's gonna support me and help more people become even more aware on what I'm doing on this platform. The first thing that I always do, and this is very crucial for a successful project, I get to know my client. This means I get to know their goals for the project, I understand their pain points, and I get to a level of understanding to where I can actually anticipate their needs. I recognize what they want their audience to interpret or feel from the final video. Knowing your client is the same as knowing your audience. A good mindset to have is to just assume that the client is part of the audience. Typically what the client likes is what the audience is gonna like. The second thing is I make a shot list and this is where you get to brainstorm and for me this is where a lot of the fun begins because you're applying your creative mind to start actually making the video. Your shot list can look like sketches, it can just be text on paper. When I first started making videos it was animations. I just drew the pictures and that was me scripting and storyboarding and planning out all the different scenes of the music video. Whenever you write down things you're probably going to remember it much better than if you were to type it in your phone or whatever. Sometimes too if I don't have a notebook with me and I don't want to use my phone or I just don't feel like grabbing my phone, I'll just get a pen if it's right in front of me and I'll write on my hand. And that's the easiest way, I guarantee you, that's the easiest way to not forget anything. You need to determine what the audio will be. So is there gonna be music? Is there gonna be actual sounds from the recording scene that you're at? Is there gonna be any sound effects? Another thing that you need to determine is what scenes you actually need. So is there gonna be any slow motion, any wide angle shots, any standalone shots to where you have your subject just in the dead center of the frame? If you're working with models or if you have a model, what do do you want them to wear? Is this for a gym? Is this for a supplement company? Do you want them showcasing the product or wearing the brand's clothing if they have clothing? Those are just some basic examples, but they are some real life examples just to consider or just to even think about whenever you're working on a video, especially if it's for a client. The third thing that I do is I prep my gear for the day. This is typically the day or the night before shoot day. I don't like to take everything that I own. I prefer to take things that I know I'm gonna need or most likely will need, like 90% chance I will need this. I prefer to pack light because I work with a lot of people and those people are moving and they're very dynamic scenes. So I need to make sure that my gear is not holding me down. Plus, if I plan correctly, I'm able to do this. I'm able to be just as nimble and just as dynamic. I'm able to get better camera angles because I don't have a lot of gear weighing me down or I don't have a lot of gear in my bag that I'm afraid to like swing the wrong way. Most shoots that I do, I have my camera, duh. I have one to two lenses, definitely two batteries, my tripod, and my cage, which is typically just for protection. And sometimes I just prefer a heavier camera. Fourth step is just to take a lot of footage. This is a simple step, almost a brainless step, but it needs to be said because some people are still afraid to take more footage than they think they'll need. Chances are you're not using a film camera, you're using a digital camera. If you're doing a photography job, just take the extra photos. Yeah, it might be a little bit more for you to shift through whenever you're at home editing, but I would rather you have taken the shot and not needed it than have needed the shot and you never even took it. Just sounds like a nightmare. So just take the shots, take the extra videos. It's shoot day finally, take advantage of it. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not taking as much footage as you possibly can. 
Now, this last one is more personal preference. Some people are completely against this, but I recommend to review the footage with your client. Not after like every clip that you record, like if it's like 15 seconds and you're done, you're like, hey, hey, come here, I gotta I got review this with you. Or if you take like three pictures, you're like, hey, hey, if you keep doing that, that can make you look unprofessional. And like, you don't really know what you're doing or you don't have a clear vision of where this is gonna go. If it's possible, I recommend just to like take a few handful of pictures, like I don't know, 10, 15 different photos. If you record some clips, like I don't know, five or six or seven clips and you show them like, hey, this is just what it's looking like. And they're like, oh, you know, it's looking really good. Where'd you learn to do that? And you're like, oh, I watched this guy named Tanner on YouTube and I actually, I, I follow him on Instagram at they call me underscore Tanner. Oh, you follow him on Instagram? I follow him on Instagram too. Yeah, I really like his content. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at they call me underscore Tanner. Whenever you're reviewing any of the footage, make sure that they like the direction that you're going. Now, this is your creativity being applied to their project, their vision. You need to make them resonate with your footage just as you need to resonate with their vision. Things can look pretty different between the ideas in our minds and what's actually on the camera screen. So make sure that they like the direction things are going. If you learned something new, or if you just simply enjoyed watching this video, crush that like button because that's gonna help other people become aware of what I'm doing on this platform. If you'd like to say thank you, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you won't miss any of my future videos to come. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it to the end of this video, seriously, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate your time. I can't say thank you enough. I hope that you have a great workout. I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you have a great meal. I hope you have a great night. Yeah, that sounds like a whole great day. You wake up, you work out, you have a great workout, you have a great meal, you have a great night. That sounds like a good day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye. I found a, uh, I found a cluster one. It's like a bunch of pool balls on a billiard. <laughs> it's like a bunch of pool balls on a billiards table. Oh, that's dangerous. Whoa, 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 whoa! Before you go, this is gonna be a little bit of an announcement. I was gonna save it for my next video, but I figured since I'm here and I'm thinking about it, I might as well tell you. I'm gonna start a new series on YouTube where I edit your own photos. So they don't need to be just gym photos. They can be landscape shots. They can be portraits. They can be product shots any kind of photography that you're into and you just wanna see me edit it and give it my own style, my own twist, you can send your photos to this email address. No more than three photos per person because I just don't wanna be like overwhelmed with photos and people are like, hey, why don't you edit my photos? I, I No more than three photos per person just to start out, we'll see where it goes, but I would like this to work. I would like it to be something. If I get like at least three people to send in photos, It'll be its own YouTube episode, but I figured this would be something fun, a way for me to actually engage with my audience for us to connect and have some interaction with each other. And I just think it's like a nice little thing to have. So if you like your photos edited by me, you can send them to this email address. Again, no more than three photos per person, just starting out, we'll see where it goes. And it might be in my next YouTube video. All right, thank you so much again for watching my videos. I hope that you have a great one. Bye.